Hi, Rita. <laughs> Where are my, oh, my mittens are clear over there. I can't put my mittens on. <laughs> And I don't have any mittens, so. <laughs> Leanne Schumacher knitted those mittens for me. Bless her heart. I need a knitter. I need to know a knitter. I think we know some knitters. They need to step up and make everybody mittens. You'll get no argument from me. <laughs> I'm going to sure. go. I'm going to try to um, navigate my way over to the newbies guide. How's your weather? It's it's hot as mm, here. Hot. I see the sun. I haven't been outside in two days. I was wondering about that. Outside. What's, What's outside? outside? This is where I live. In this box. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's Ooh, I just, finally cooler today. No. Oh. Jealous. Yeah, it's been really hot and humid, but I think it finally cooled off. Hmm. And I guess, so who did we have on our little panel? I invited today? a bunch of people. I don't know who all, if they pop up at the bottom and want to come on camera, they can. Um, and if we don't have, if we don't have many questions about basic care, then we'll just bail out of here and um, regroup for tomorrow. I've never known this group to be short on questions. <laughs> so, and we can talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So let's share. Sure. Okay. So I'm just going to check. Uh, I was helping someone. I'm going to be right back. Sure. I want to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, uh, even though CrabCon is going on, the entire team is still on Facebook answering your questions and helping people. Yeah, just start whatever you've got about basic care. Um, if you don't have questions, I will bring up the newbies guide and we will go through the newbies guide. But that's what I've got up on the, the screen is the Crab Street Journal website, which is where the care information is kept. We are, CSJ is the flagship site of the Land Hermit Crab Owners Society organization. At some point, I will get my project done to put a very basic bare bones care sheet up on the Lycos website and establish that as a standard of care for our entire international community and then allow for variations as need be. But for right now, we still have everything care related on Crab Street Journal. Hermit Grub has good hermit crab food. We have an approved sellers list on CSJ and on Facebook. And if they're an approved seller, you can safely buy from them without concern. Okay, let me go here and see. That side doesn't exist. How many hiding spots for the crabs should I have? Well, ideally, every crab should have a place to go and be by itself if it wants to. Even if it's just a little ledge or a corner, that's why we don't overcrowd. They need space. They need some place to go if they want to go and do their own thing. Not everybody wants to pile into the same hut. So give them options and let them decide where they want to be. Just like us. Get away. Yeah, like I'm doing lots of socializing now and talking. But when I turn off the camera, I'm going to go lay in my bedroom and hide. Yeah, with some Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> I don't have no ice cream. <laughs> um, I know the crabs are supposed to, uh, heating pads on the back of the tank, but I have a small heating pad on the side. So they have one side that is cooler. Is that okay? Yes, that's exactly okay. Because they're supposed to have a range of temperatures in the tank. There needs to be a cool zone and a warm zone so that if if the warm zone is too warm, they can move away when they need to. Or if they're too cold, they can move towards the heat if they need to. So wherever you've got to put the heat pad to create a gradient, sometimes the back wall is the hot wall and the front wall is the cool wall. I have a Again, just options. They know what they need. They know what will make them comfortable. And they'll seek out that spot in the tank. We just need to provide it for them. I have a small LED on top of the tank that I only turn on if I want to see something and then turn it off. I'm setting up a second tank. 
is there a good UVB light that I can mount that's got everything I need? So, Danielle, I don't know if you saw Laura's talk on lighting, but UVB has to be inside the tank. It's useless through glass and almost completely useless through a screen. So you have to have a way to mount the light inside the tank so that it's safe, secure, the crabs can't get to it or touch it and burn themselves in the bulb because the bulb needs to be exposed. So um, I had to mount mine to my lid with magnets and then zip ties to get the lights inside and then put cord protectors over the cords so that the crabs didn't pinch through them. And I do use timers on all my lights. So it depends to just say this light is the light to buy. I can't tell you that. It's what will fit your tank, what will fit in the tank, what that you can make work. The Reptisun bulbs and Arcadia bulbs are the best UV bulbs, UVB and A bulbs to get. But there's a lot that goes into UV that you need to understand before you put a UV light in your tank. That's why it's not a requirement. We can't prove the need for it just yet, but it also has to be executed correctly or you could hurt your crabs. And I timer everything. Timers make your life so much easier. Um, Rita, you can answer Erica's question. I'm going to look something up real quick. Okay. Erica. Uh, well, I, you know, we go back and forth on this because anyone that has crabs will tell you, I wish I'd bought a bigger tank. I wish I'd bought a bigger <laughs> tank. <laughs> and as soon as you get it, and I've done it, I've been there. As soon as you buy your tank and you get all your cool stuff in there, and then you look at something someone else has. Oh, I want to put that in there too. So basically for two, we're going to tell you start with 20 because if you do everything right, they're going to grow. And someday maybe you're going to fall in love with another crab and then you've done all this work and now you have no room for that extra crab or your crabs are getting really big and all of a sudden they need some extra space. So, you know, technically we're going to tell you to, but if you can get your hands on a bigger tank, do that because you're going to be happier in the long run and there's less tear down and build back up. There's no such thing as too much room. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Now, and you know, every time we go to the store, we have crab eyes. So, Oh, I wonder if that would work for the crabs. I wonder if that would work for the, let's, oh, so then you see the perfect thing. You have no room for it. So. I have a 150 gallon tank that is six foot long. Still not big enough. It's not big enough. <laughs> I put a big topper on it. It now has a big, um, I took a, a screen exoterra and put plexiglass in it to make it solid and put it on top. And it's still not enough room. Yeah, those exoterras. I think at some point we should we should address those and how they are really good for your toppers, but mm, because of all the stuff that your crabs need, basic care and whatever. There's it's challenging. It's they, they, harder to keep my humidity yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, what kind of nuts can I use for my crabs? So most nuts are safe. I think like black walnut. But you can easily find that out on the Crab Street Journal. So if you go into the newbies guide and we scroll past the basics and we scroll and we scroll and we scroll. Do, do, do. Food. Hermit Crab Food Guide. And we're just going to open that in a new tab and we're going to jump to that tab. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? <laughs> so in this article, you're going to find a nutritional guide so that you know what to feed and what nutritional need it meets, a foraging guide, where to buy things, uh, what to feed and why, safe food list right here that you can print. That is a Google Doc. That's just a simple Google Doc. And I keep that pretty to the moment updated because it's really easy to update. 
you can go there and you can print that out and everything that we know it is safe to eat is on that list, including nuts. So that's the best place to look. Um, th they're also broken down into other categories, but there's not one that's just nuts on here. But I don't know too many nuts that are unsafe outside of um, like the black walnut or what's the one, the horse chestnuts, Rita, that's not safe. Uh, uh, uh. Don't know the name. I think they're called horse chestnut in England, but they're like just a regular chestnut here. They make horses mm -hmm. sick. I know that like horses can't have them and those aren't safe for crabs either. But it's all there. But basically what you're looking for is something unsalted, unadulterated. You want basic, raw, plain nuts. That goes for peanut butter as well or any nut butters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how hot can your habitat be before it gets dangerous? I, I think anything over 90, you're getting to the area where the crabs can start to overheat and they have nowhere to go to, to be, to cool off and they start hanging out of their shells so that's why it's important to have a thermostat on your heat pad. You, you could be gone to school or to work and the heat pad is fine. It's been working for years. And while mm -hmm. you're at work, your air conditioning in your house goes out and your house is now 100 degrees and that heat pad is still pumping out the heat because it doesn't know what to do. And your tank is going to be over 100 degrees. So um, yeah. thermostats, really good insurance against overheating. And another look at that is maybe your gauge isn't where it needs to be. Maybe your gauge is reading incorrectly. And we talked earlier about the ambient heat. There's going to be some warmer places in the tank and cooler places in the tank. So depending on where that gauge is, you may be getting an incorrect reading. And that's why we, we want you guys to all sit and, and talk with us and go over your setups. It's not a punishment. It's basically to help you help your hermit crabs thrive. Is it okay to have open spaces? Like I have open spaces, but I can't see to it. So uh, my crab's okay with they need, they need walking space. Like, so you want kind of a mix of like, it's open, sort of like the beach would be like if they needed to scuttle under a rock or behind a bit of, of beach grass or something like that, they can, but they need places to be able to walk and forage also. I just get the, I don't even know what to call them. It's like an accordion style uh, tube cord protector and it, they come pre-cut and the ones I bought I think were double layer and the you just cut them to fit over the entire length of the cord that's going to be inside the tank and you just push the cord inside of it so then the crab if they pinch anything they're pinching that outer plastic protector but it just came in a big coil from Amazon And Dan says he uses a dome light on top of a custom cut plexiglass lid with a hole. 84 is a good temperature. That's fine. If you go to uh, the Cenobita species website, I have a link on there for like global mean temperature. So you can see uh, what the temperature range is where your crabs live natively, what the highest temperature they experience is versus the lowest temperature, like um, Scavola that lives at the Red Sea on the beach of the Red Sea, they experience a slightly higher temperature range than say a Caribbean crab does. So at what point can you have more crabs per gallon? It depends on the size of the crab. If your crabs are this big, they need more than 10 or 15 gallons each. If your crabs are. And you're spending a lot for shells. If your crabs are this big, <laughs> yeah. you could probably have 20 of them 
in a 50 gallon tank it all yeah. but they're gonna grow the, the ones that this big you're gonna get this big that's why you buy the big tank first plan for growth expect them to live their full life and plan accordingly don't go yep. Oh, they're not going to live that long and I'm going to buy 40 crabs right now because what are you going to do with 40 crabs in 40 years when you've got 40 crabs this big and a single shell is $30? Yeah. Be realistic. And then you can't just go, well, I'll just rehome all of them and dump them back into the market. Like that's not, that's not appropriate. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we've seen with Mary's the captive bread, the, the teeny tiny ones, mm -hmm. it, it's not about the gallons as much as it is just the activity that they have. But again, if you plan for them to live, don't go through it two, three times as you, as you bulk up, if you don't have to, you know. Is 84 to 85% okay for humidity or do I need to take some humidity out? To me, you're hitting kind of a high range. My humidity, I keep it down by 70%. And I don't have mold problems. My wood doesn't mold my food. The fresh stuff, like my fresh fruit will mold after a few days. But like right now, I've got blackberries that are in the dish and they've been in there like at least four days. They're mush, but they're in the dish. So they're not molding. I keep my humidity down. 70% is safe. We, we tell you 80 and 80 because it's an easy target for you to aim for. And as long as you're anywhere in the neighborhood, you're going to be okay. So that gives you fluctuation either way. Maintaining it up there at 85 and higher is when we start to see the saturation of the substrate. And then that eventually leads to problems. Hey, Moa. The jumbos outgrow the crab, the, not the crab, the uh, cocoa huts. Like coconuts only get so big and then your jumbos <laughs> can't fit in there. They need a new house. You got to get out your Dremel tool. <laughs> start making a bigger hole. Um, Lauren, you will want to watch Kelsey's enrichment video that just happened uh, like two hours ago. I can't begin to touch on everything she touched on for enrichment. She, she covered every A to Z option, nuance and possibility. And all of today's videos, when we wrap up here today, we'll load up today's replay and you'll be able to fast forward and jump through all of today's videos and watch what you miss. So definitely go and find Kelsey's video on enrichment and watch that. Uh, chestnuts. The best way to sex crabs without stressing them out. <laughs> don't. <laughs> it doesn't really that's always my answer is that it doesn't really matter it's arbitrary if you're worried about a name the crab doesn't care if you call it mary or mark right um go ahead so you can get lucky and if you have good places like place your decorations strategically at the front of the tank so that when you're mm -hmm. sitting by the tank watching them and they reach up and drop their pants a little bit, boom, you can tell. You just gotta be mm -hmm. a little, like, give them an opportunity. I think some people have had some luck, like maybe putting the crab in a clear container and like looking up from above, but in their normal walking, they don't come out far enough. And mm -hmm. uh, Thursday, I was being nosy and trying to tell the gender of my two captive bred babies because I released them into the tank back here from the 10 gallon and now they're just in there. And I just wanted one last check because we need to prove, <laughs> we're trying to prove that crabs do change gender. So I wanted to document SETI pattern and gender before I unleashed them to never see them again. So I was trying to sex them one more time. And the how'd that go? <laughs> oh, that was swimmingly, let me tell you. The, the, the first one, who's the more gentle one, just didn't cooperate at all. And the second one pinched me and then jumped out of its shell and back into the bowl that I was holding them in. So I ended up with a naked crab because I was being nosy. So it's not, it wasn't really worth it. And I still don't know what gender it is because I couldn't see it. Yeah. And it kept its abdomen curled just so. I couldn't tell if there were 
any pleopods over there. And because it's a baby, I don't know if the pleopods are supposed to be there yet at almost three right. years old. When do those show up? I wasn't going to pick up the it's, naked crab and take a look. I'd already done enough to terrify the poor yeah. thing. It's so far down on the important list. Yeah. You know, so, except for specific purposes. It's more important that their habitat is set up correctly than what gender they are. Crystal inactive throughout the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they get up about the time that we're going to bed. So if you're lucky and everything is set up really well and your temperature's good um, and they don't have too many reasons to be scared or, or caught off guard during the day, they will come out during the day. But they need to be super comfortable in their environment before they'll start doing that. They're, they're prey animals. So during the day, they're vulnerable anytime that they're out and about, which is why they come out at night. So if you give them, set up their environment perfectly, you give them a good, safe, quiet place to come out. They will come out. Yeah, it just takes some time. They're also, they also avoid daytime because it dry, they can dry out. It, it basically evaporates the shell water away. So um, that's another reason they avoid the heat of the day, but it just takes time. And you, I have found that some of my crabs that were really comfortable with me and out and about during the day, they go away for a molt and they come back and they've completely forgotten who I am and, <laughs> and what this place is. So you have to give them some more time to reacclimate to you. And the lighting talk that Laura gave, was very helpful because she talked about lighting cues and how us just clicking our lights off and on isn't helping them adapt. And there's no environmental cue to tell them that the sun is coming up or coming down because we go from full sun to no sun, full sun to no sun. So you need to watch the lighting talk if you can and see how we need to somehow create a, a a more natural light cycle. And one thing that I just immediately started doing like last night, the first thing I did was come in here and backed off my timers and opened my window so that when the sun comes up in the morning, my office where the tanks are at starts to get gentle light from outside. And then mm -hmm. my lights are set to come on later in the morning and one at a time staggered. So it slowly gets brighter and then I set them to turn off a little bit earlier so that they can also have a more natural sunset through the window. And the window doesn't shine like the sun because my window faces south. That way. Yeah. My mom will kill me because <laughs> I don't know what direction. I know, I know east, west, <laughs> and it's not that way. So it's south, so I don't get direct sunlight in there, but they're getting ambient light. And so that counts as part of the 12 hour light cycle. And that's a more natural transition. And she said that should help with activity. Um, as the sun goes down, your crabs will start coming out earlier because they now have a cue that the sun set instead of just blinked out of existence. So hermit crabs are not just toys. There's a lot of work involved in them and you can continue to get deeper and deeper and deeper into their care as we've just heard um but you can make your you know your hermit crabs pretty happy with pretty basic setup mm -hmm. it you don't need to do all that but it's there now all that information is there for you um but you can get by with pretty basic stuff yeah i made a really simple change and i didn't go buy anything and i didn't change anything mm -hmm. i just adjusted my timer a little bit um, how long do crabs usually live? Not even a year. If we're talking, if you're, if you're talking numbers of crabs in captivity, sold in captivity, how many of them survive after leaving the beach? Very few. But they can live. 
40 years or more yeah. because we've seen it, but because pet shops, kiosks, beach stores don't care to tell you what it takes because nobody would buy it. I mean, if I knew up front what it was going to take to keep these guys happy and thriving, I said, well, yeah, I'll go get a fish, but <laughs> They're not going to tell you what it takes because people would back off. Yeah. Tracy has another question about the high humidity. So if your humidity is staying up, you may just need to vent a tiny bit of your lid. And it may not seem like enough the first day, but there's an accumulative effect. So just start with a tiny little gap in your lid and see if you can't get it to creep slowly back down and stabilize at a, a slightly lower level. Um, if the habitat is just like really oversaturated and you're using bubblers, you can turn off the bubblers, turn the bubblers down, move the water away from the heat so it's not evaporating so fast. Seventy-eight percent isn't bad. No, it's not. Mm -mm. Um, Stacy's asking the first time she's ever heard, uh, 70% humidity is okay. Um, how long have I been doing that? Since probably since I learned that they needed humidity. <laughs> Once I finally brought it up, I've never kept my humidity really high. And when I, when I checked the humidity in Florida, like in the Caribbean and other places, it doesn't, the humidity doesn't stay pegged at 80 or 90%. So um, yeah, I just kind of stay in the lower range. And because of the size of my tank and now with the topper, it's hard for me to get it any higher. I have a lot of, there's a lot of area in there to keep humid and I'm in Illinois. Again, as Stacy mentioned, it's a, it's a, a, a place for you to look to be. If you're a little over, it's fine. It doesn't need to sit at 80. We want to give you a goal, but we don't want to drive you crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> hi, Jane. Um, Janine. I dropped in a link for the NOAA website that has the um, global temperature and precipitation, but you can, you can find weather information. So, if you know where your crab came from, and if you have Caribbean crabs, they came from the Caribbean, uh, go and look up on the National Oceanic and Atmospheric something or another. <laughs> I got three of them. Uh, they have historical data, and you can see what the trends are for that region, how hot that region gets, how high the humidity typically is, and you can see what your crabs need. And that 80% kind of is good for if you're keeping multiple species together, you may need it a little bit higher because some of the other species might need it a little more humid. I think strawberries like a little more humid and heat. Um, Karen, uh, I'm going to not recommend. Oh, so maybe Stacy, if you want to weigh in on this, but. I'm still scrolling, so I don't think I'm to the question. Yeah, to. no, that's fine. Karen wants to put her setup on wheels, and that it is a concern. She's concerned about tunnels collapsing. Anytime that you're moving that tank, you have the possibility for collapsing a tunnel, which is why, if, you know, if you're moving your crabs, if you have to go to a different home or whatever, we suggests that you tear that down and build back up again. You you will be in danger of collapsing any mold tunnels and harming any crabs that you may have molting at the time. If the crabs were all above ground, you could roll it around, but I that's not something that I would do. I would not be actively moving my tank when I had crabs underground. Because if you so if you catch them day one, maybe they can dig out and fix it. But if you catch them once the molt has begun, they are completely mm -hmm. helpless, and they're the sand is going to collapse on them, and they're definitely going to die. 
<laughs> Sarah's in Illinois too. All right, let me go. I'm going to scroll back up because I thought there was one other. I don't do 70 for my temperature, just 70% relative humidity. My temperature is usually uh, 82 thereabouts. But my office my office fluctuates. So sometimes I can get my tank temperature up uh, closer to 85, but now just the humidity. 70 degrees is too cold. 75 is the bare minimum temperature. If you have like a random thing, something happens and it drops for a couple hours, you'll be okay. But sustained below 75 is not good and the warmer they are obviously to a degree the more active they're going to be i i've physically seen that happen yeah. in my own little tank yeah so yeah 70s no bueno if your tank if your crabs huddle in front of the heat pad the tank mm. isn't warm enough How do you become an adopter? <laughs> you reply <laughs> and you listen to Anna when she tells you that you need to change something. Super Again, easy. it's not a punishment. No. It's, it's to your advantage and to the crab's advantage. We want the best for the crabs. People that entrust us to rehome their crabs do so with the understanding that we will find a good home where their crabs will thrive. So we have a commitment to them to get them into a good home and somebody who's committed to their care, but we'll help you get there. If you just don't know, we're happy to teach you. And Anna will spend the time it takes. So long as you're receptive and making changes, she will work with you and get you approved. We want you to be approved. So you guys are doing an adoption talk tomorrow. What, what time is that, Anna? Yeah, make Anna look that up. I got like 800 windows open. Central, 9:30 Central. So do your do your clock math. Um, one of your crabs barely grows when she molts. Other crab has drastic size changes when she molts. So the, <laughs> the <laughs> this is a double edged sword. Um, the first thing you want to look at is what are you feeding? Are you feeding protein every single day? And is it at least half of their meal every single day? Protein is super important. A well balanced diet is super important. Um, are you feeding enough fats from all the categories? If you're feeding all the things right, and you're you, you've gone over this with a team member and we've checked off everything that you're, you've done everything right and they're still not growing. I don't have an answer to that because my two captive bred babies are not growing. And Mary showed in her talk earlier, she, had, she held up three babies, all from the same female, all hatched at the same time, all different sizes. One was this big and the littlest one was like that and we don't know why. There has to be something in them that they're not they're not growing um, and hers all live in the exact same environment and eat all the exact same food. So she's removed all the other variables and is still having a discrepancy in growth. I have a Kvipes, my one remaining Kvipes in this tank, who has barely grown in the go away fly four years that I've had those Kvipes. Wow. Yeah, barely grown. And I have uh, two violas that are in the big tank and they are very slow growers. The compressors that are in that tank um, are growing like weeds. <laughs> Ramona is soon going to be the biggest crab in that tank. So what's different? I don't know. My answer to that. So I don't have to type all that. What someone asks me is crabs, Crabs. <laughs> Crabs. More research needed. Exactly. 
not everybody has the funds for a big fancy tank. And if you go onto our website, a matter of fact, and uh, let me go up here. And if you type in MacGyver, are any of you old enough to remember the show MacGyver? I used to be so in love with Richard D. Anderson and that <laughs> stupid mullet. Oh, that mullet. Mm. Only number two to Rick Springfield. So search for MacGyver. And now this is meant to be emergency temporary housing, but this is literally how to create a life sustaining habitat out of whatever you have at home right now. So some of this stuff can be carried over and kept and used. And some of it needs to be replaced, you know, at some point for a, a more permanent setup. But this shows you how inexpensive you could do it if you needed to. And I am frugal. I don't want to spend money on anything. I don't have to. So if I can save money on this and spend it over here and buy some shells, that's what I do. I'm always looking for a sale. If you see me on Facebook, I'm always like, hey, there's a deal over here and look what I found. And so-and-so has this on sale and go to Aldi's and find this or big lots. I want you guys to save money and be able to spend it where you really need to spend it. Yeah, I can't get that mullet out of my head. Thanks. <laughs> There's a new, they like did a MacGyver reboot and I am not having any part of it. Mm -mm. No, nope. It's not, it's not real. It's not the same. The ideal substrate. Okay. So this is for Cenobita clypetus, AKA the purple pincher, AKA Caribbean crab. The, Ideal substrate is five parts play sand to one part eco earth. A part does not necessarily mean a pound, it's by volume. So if this is your scoop, five scoops of sand, one scoop of eco earth after the eco earth has been dried and expanded. That's enough. Um, we talked about soil amendments with Helena, and um, she's had, pardon the broth, perhaps. she's had some good success with putting um, some shell grit in there and has never had any instances of that becoming trapped. So um, probably safe to do, but not necessary. To, to get started, you just need play sand and eco earth. Mix it up. And as you get smarter and better at caring for your crabs and their environment and um, what, how things react with each other, do it. You do you because <laughs> you know your crabs and what we tell you is the best place for you to get a good start. We're building it's not your complicated. Foundation. Right, 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 right. We are giving Change. you a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dan brings oh. up a good point. Calibrate your hygrometer. Yeah. Most of them are inaccurate. The uh, little cheap gauge ones that they sell at Petco are absolute trash and aren't even meant for a humid environment. If you can find a nice one that's meant for a cigar humidor, those are usually good quality. And you, bird. <laughs> you can calibrate those. And um, then, you know, if, even if they don't have an adjustment on them, if you calibrate it and you know it reads 5% high, well, then you just mentally subtract the 5% off when you take your readings. Oh, more math. <laughs> Uh, Jean is asking if it's appropriate to lower the tank temperature at night in Colorado by a few degrees like it would be at night in the Caribbean. Yes, so long as you're staying in the range of what they experience in nature. 55 is too cold. I think Mike does that. But you sh should, so even though my lights aren't meant to be heat emitting, they still put off a small amount of heat. So when the lights go out, your temperature should be dropping naturally 
by a degree or so anyway, just because the lights are no longer putting off that small amount of heat that they put off. Robin, yes, protein, protein needs to be half of the daily meal. Protein's really important. You don't want them cannibalizing each other and they need it to grow. Food is power. Knowledge is power. <laughs> uh, Kelly, yes, Mary's the current theory for the size differences is a survival instinct so that you know, the bigger crabs might be preyed upon by something else while the smaller crabs are still able to escape. Maybe they're not competing for the same size shells. There's there's a reason for it. We just haven't unlocked it yet. Crabs. Yeah, my heat, my so my temperature changes a little bit come winter also just because the house is a little bit colder versus in the summer, my office is warmer because the computer's putting off heat and I'm in here running my mouth all the time. How do I pronounce what? I think it was one of the, the crabs that you have in your in your other Violacens or Kavipes? Kavipes, I think that's what that was. Um, you can also insulate your heat pad if you're not getting enough heat output. You can put, um, some people do styrofoam, some people do blankets. I like Reflectix because you can cut it, it fits, it's neat. Um, you still want, you don't want it like sealed tight against the heat pad. You still want a little bit of heat flow back there. But the way a heat pad works is it, it warms the objects in the tank and then some of the heat emanates from them. So it takes a little time for the heat to build up in those items. If you're heating a lot of air, your heat pad is working really hard trying to heat air. She's going to show us our cheap DIY. A dollar. <laughs> you can get those at Dollar Tree, but not all year round. So like when they came in stock this summer, I bought 10 of them for the Claws program. Yeah, we all bought up. Stack <laughs> up. They're nice because you could, I mean, it's, first of all, it's a dollar. It's a dollar and you can cut it to fit and you can buy five of them if you need to. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> These guys are laughing at me about Richard Dean Anderson. Um, I didn't get into Stargate. Oh, so the MacGyver, see the what I've got open right here? That's on the Crab Street Journal. That's our website. Um, it's crabstreetjournal.org. And um, you can just search for MacGyver in the search box and it'll come up. Yeah, like last night on Instagram, somebody posted they were having a clearance on imperfect carved shells. I and saw I that. Those shells have holes in them? No. And I'm like, well, let me tell everybody I know. And I started sending it out to everybody because I'm an enabler. <laughs> but they were if really. If they don't funny. have holes, then they're perfect. Yeah, the crabs don't care if the designs aren't perfect. Oh, please. <laughs> Keeping crabs is draining my bank account. Yeah, it's a, the struggle is real. <laughs> Eva was very, very MacGyver and put her crabs in a critter keeper during a power outage and put them under the blankets in her against her. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. You may have to put them down your pants. And the thing is, if you have a situation, and I, I address this in my talk coming up, is just... First of all, take a breath. There's there's no reason to panic because nobody thinks clearly when they panic. Think about your situation, what you have around you, what can you make work for your particular situation that you're in. And we're always there. One of us is always there on, on the, the Facebook page. So just calm down mm -hmm. and and do what you can do. If you have more than one part eco worth and they've been fine for years, um, if it's a little more, more than one part, you'll probably be okay. But um, the excess eco earth just leads to more mold and mildew issues. 
um, if you get too much of it and it for and it's like there's pockets of it, those pockets will start to, as they break down, they decompose and start to rot and put off heat and could cause a bacterial bloom. It's just, it, it depends on how much more you have. It's all science. Ugh. We don't wash or change the substrate. If you have, Carol is really, Carol Ann is really grossed out by my isopods <laughs> and my springtails. But Me too. If, if, we, if we have a, a bioactive substrate that has the springtails and the isopods in there, they're like breaking stuff down and keeping it clean. And you shouldn't really need to change the substrate unless you have a bacterial or fungal outbreak or a bad flood. Your heat goes down drastically during the winter because my room is coldest. Um, should uh, Before you add another heat pad, try insulating the tank. And then if that still doesn't do it, <laughs> get you get to the dollar store. If that still doesn't do it, then yeah, you might need to just add a second one and that you just unplug in the summer. Start with the basics. It helps to have more than one set of gauges so you can check all your zones. Yeah, Reagan, there's there's no need to change the substrate every four to six months. You may have heard that <laughs> from some other place right. or person or thing. Um, I think that originally... Go ahead. I, I think that, that changing the substrate every four to six months originates with pet stores encouraging you to keep your crabs exclusively in eco-earth. Because yeah. the eco-earth starts to rot and break down and does have to be replaced. But right. when I kept my crabs in all eco-earth, I lost almost my entire colony. Every one of them died when they went down to molt. And I had like, when I cleared it out, the bottom of my tank had this white funk all over it. So I learned yep. that way. And again, this is why we tell you, here's where you start. Here's your best opportunity. As you get smarter, mm -hmm. you, you can make your little changes and adjustments. Uh, Dan does point out that not all heaters can be insulated. Um, you do want to be careful. Like mine, so my insulation isn't, like I said, I didn't pull it tight and tape it all the way around. It's around the tank and it's taped on the ends. So there's like, it can kind of move in the back. So there's airflow. Airflow. It just helps kind of hold the heat around like a gentle warm bubble. Uh, what we got from the dollar store was a, it's a car sunshade that you put in the dash of your car to keep the sun out of your car. And it's made of silver reflective insulation type material. And it's a dollar. <laughs> so let me show you the calibration on CSJ. That's there also. <laughs> You're going to get tired of hearing that. <laughs> Go to the newbies guide. Go to the newbies guide. Okay. How do I create and maintain humidity in my crab habitat? And calibrating your humidity gauge. Right click, open new tab. Calibrating your humidity gauge is very simple. You put a little bit of salt in a bag, in a container. Don't put enough water in it to dissolve the salt. It needs to be wet. Put the gauge in, seal it up, wait. I think you got to wait like at least an hour, but like I think I usually wait overnight. The hygrometer should read somewhere around 75% to be accurate. That article explains it. There was somebody that like put a crab in their bra. I don't remember who it was. <laughs> we are crab crazy. It does sound like something you might try. <laughs> I know how hard they can pinch, and I am not putting a crab in my bra. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Day ain't over yet. Rita, Rita knows me way too well. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Do -do -do. 
Stephanie, they, they don't have them all the time. I couldn't find them late last year. So I think they're an early summer product. And once they're gone, they're gone. Do isopods keep other bugs away like grain mites? Eh, I don't think so. You can, can the, so grain mites and food mites and soil mites. Ramona is annoying. One of the violasins, sorry. Because she has no manners. Um, most mites are, harm, those type of mites are harmless. You find them annoying and gross, but they're not really hurting anything. And you can do some minor changes to help them die back and keep them under control. Bringing my humidity down a little bit also helped with that too. However, having my humidity lower may be why my isopods finally um, kind of died off. I have a few of them. Um, I think I lost the last of them when I had to do the ant dig out. But um, if you have parasitic mites, that's a different thing. But grain mites, soil mites, those kind of food mites, they're kind of everywhere and you just aren't aware of it until you see them in a concentrated mass in your tank. It's better to just do some population control and don't get too concerned about eradicating them. Dinner's happening behind me. Dave, Dave, no, it's fine. Cooking? Dave's, what are you making? I'm making chicken with rice. Chicken with rice, I but it's asparagus. Right? asparagus. Oh, all right, let's wrap this I'm up. I'm good. No. <laughs> um, so if you need some help, there's a link that Anna posted. Um, Jean, I don't know if you're in our Facebook group, but Moa that was on earlier, Moa is the bug expert, and she can look at your mm -hmm. mice. If you can get a good picture of it, like maybe uh, put it, I've suggested like catching some of them and putting them in a dish of water so you can photograph them easier and post the picture. We can help you identify what they are, but Mo is really good at that. Uh, no live mealworms with the crabs. Carol Ann will show us tomorrow what Eco Earth did to her crab shells. That's another good point, Carol Ann. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, no, it's not just you. This is, seems to be predominantly a female hobby, but there's guys out there too. I just don't think that they get online and chit chat and talk about it. <laughs> not I've anything. seen a lot more guys, Same like we really approve them. Mm -hmm. You Same know, I've seen a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, uh, Shia, um, Mike, Felix, Risky, who am I missing? Ian. There's some boys. I didn't know Risky was a guy. I mean, I just saw a name that I didn't have for, for <laughs> two years now. That's oh, hilarious. yeah, she's. Mm. That's hilarious. <laughs> I hope he's watching. <laughs> mm. I'm just reading. Yeah, Mo is still here. Extremely tired. I bet on. Aww. Andy. Andy. Anna thought Risky was a female also. Yeah. Jay, yes, Jay. Jay's, a, Jay's new to my world. You found a giant house centipede in your tank. One time I found a red, what is it? Red. Something. Anyway, it was a giant skink. Wild skink in my tank. Mm -hmm. When I had my, I lived in a house with a basement where the doors open. It was a walkout basement and the crabs were in the laundry room in the basement, but I frequently would leave the doors open while I worked in the yard and we had all kinds of skinks in the backyard. Well, apparently one came in the house and found its way into the crab tank. And I had no idea. How do you catch a giant skink that has burrowed a hole into your crab tank? You call a guy. I, oh. I, I oh. finally got some, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to hang on to him. So I got some of those yellow uh, Playtex gloves and a dustpan, <laughs> and I kind of got him like into the dustpan, and then I had the window open. I was able to just get him in my hand, and I just released him back out into the yard. And then you threw the gloves away. <laughs> I, like I was fine with him being in the yard, but I'm like, dude, you can't be in the tank. Mm -mm. No. Gosh, it's it's almost been how long have we been in here? An hour almost. So we've got about five more minutes. Anybody have any any last minute questions? I got all day. 
<laughs> Dinner's about to be ready. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to eat that cold. I technically have three tanks, but the third tank was the 10 gallon baby tank that they just vacated on Thursday. But one of their tank mates that I moved in there was um, a Rogosis that dug under. So I'm waiting for that one to come up. How much eco earth I have on my substrate? Maybe one or two, oops, one or two blocks. But I have five, I think, bags of play sand. Am I okay? That sounds okay to you it, know. Can you send like are you on Facebook or on social media somewhere? Send us a picture and let us look at it. That's the easiest way for us to tell. Typically it's half a brick per 50 pound bag. So I think you would be four bags of sand to the amount of eco earth. So you probably should be okay. It sounds like. Yeah. And again, send a picture. If, if I'm helping you, I know this, <laughs> sometimes people don't understand. I'm going to ask you for a picture, not to judge you, not to, for any other reason, except first of all, it can stop me from having to ask you 600 extra questions because I can see your tank from the side, from the front and from the top. There's like 12 questions right there. I don't have to ask you. It speeds but up the I, process. It speeds up the process. Um, you don't want to be talking to me for 20 hours, 50 questions later. Yeah. So please, if you're, if you're around, don't be put off if I'm asking you for a picture. Please, please. This is my vertical tank. This is a 75-gallon tank that I put on its end. It has about, you can't see all of it, but it has about 16 inches of substrate. The crabs that are in here all were small crabs when they moved in. Some of them were really small. They dig all the way to the bottom of that. The baby crabs moved in on Thursday and I posted earlier today on Instagram. I opened it up and there's a ledge up here at the top, at the very top. And one of the babies was all the way up there. Wee! Yeah, I'm like, please be careful. <laughs> That's a long way up there. But um, climbing space matters, molting space matters. You have yeah. to find a happy balance in between. Yeah, you, you wouldn't think that they could dig that far, but they can. Um, the only reason I've been switching out crabs was um, as I feel like they're getting too big for this tank, I've moved um, one or two into the, the bigger tank just to make sure that they have plenty of room in here. I have two Breva Manis that are in here right now, and one of them is getting kind of big and I really would like to move it over because I just have one Breva Manis in this tank and so it's all alone so I would like to move the two Brevies from here over. Anna posted to the group on Facebook our group is the Land Hermit Crab Owners Society. There's a business page and there's a Facebook group. There's a spinoff group for buying and selling and then there's a crab con group. If you're adopting baby crabs, there's a baby crab group so that you can get all the support that you need. There's also an adopters group. We're a little group crazy. The adopters group is like, it's called the, the Adoption Academy, but it's invite only. So if you apply to adopt and you need some help, Anna's going to send you to the Adoption Academy to get your education on. And somebody will mentor you in that group and get you up to speed so that you can be approved. Again, it's not a punishment. We want you to thrive. We want your hermit crabs to thrive. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm seeing stuff about mealworms and beetles and I can't follow. Yeah. They're not in the tank, are they? I think they're talking the about I think they're talking about raising beetles. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's let's stay focused. Yeah, no live worms in the tanks. 
Nothing. Isopods and springtails and the food mites and stuff are okay, but that's it. Anna, I hate you a little bit right now. <laughs> I am a Beatles fan, though. I mean, you can't have a name like Rita and not be a Beatles fan. So I am that. But EE, -E? no, no. Kristen, you don't have to be on Facebook to adopt. The form is out there on the Lycos website, which is um, LA. L H S O S L. I can't do it the way Mary does. L H C O S dot org. Um, the application to adopt is there, and Anna will just work with you one on one. If you don't want to be on Facebook and don't want to do the adoption academy, she'll still work with you. We're very accommodating. Facebook is not the end all be all. I love hate Facebook. I hate Facebook. Yes, we, but we I love, love what it's done for our hermit crab community. Yeah. Okay. It's oh, there you go, Anna. Thank you. <laughs> so we're at the end of our session. Thanks everybody for tuning in. If you have any other questions, uh, post them on Instagram to me or on Twitter to me or on Facebook to all of us and we'll answer you. Thanks for coming and chatting and getting all your questions answered. Rita, thank you for being my sidekick. <laughs> we got to take it on the road. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have crabs, we'll travel. Yeah. Love you, babe. <laughs> Love you. Bye, guys. I'm leaving the stage, exiting the building. Oh, and it's just me. Bye. I see all your little names down there. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>